Okay, um, anyone brought, oh, very good. You brought and we spelled any style sheet. Um, if you have one that's already open that has data in it, that will help the most. I'm gonna go right to this spreadsheet. Most of the time when you want to total something, you would put your sum formula right in this area. And people do that for traditional reasons, or maybe it's because in grade school you add Draw a line and then you put the total down there. However, there are disadvantages to putting it there. For one thing, if you have another row of data, you have to move your sum formula and you have to change the sum formula to allow for a larger range. So as an alternative, how about putting your sum formula right up here? This way, if you have a large spreadsheet, you don't have to scroll down to see it. And uh, it's the first thing you see when you come on the page. And I'd like to point out something about this particular sum formula. I've got it uh, from J5 to J500. So if you are expecting 50 rows, just make it 500. Don't put anything below it. Because you don't want to plan for 50 and then have 55 rows of data. And your data is not accurate. So that is a very easy way to make sure and to save you two steps. Now suppose you have a lot of data and it scrolls off the page. This next trick is freezing panes. And how that works is you select a cell and you click on the freezing panes button and it will freeze everything above and to the left of where you selected. So I have selected right here, A5. And I'm gonna to go to the View tab and from there I wanna to go to Freeze Panes. And if you click the down arrow, the first choice is freeze panes. Having clicked it, as you can see, it never scrolls off the page. I'm going to unfreeze it. And as an alternative, suppose you have a very large spreadsheet and you don't want the names to scroll off the page. You can click right here where I've got at E5 and go to freezing panes and freeze it. And now it's frozen in two directions. So you can go this way and this way. So freezing panes is really nice, but my spreadsheet here is pretty small, so we're not gonna use it. Okay, next is the totals page. Most people will want the totals page to um, drill down to the essential information. So I'm going to go right here, click on this for a totals page. And there's a very easy way to move data into the totals page. And it starts with a copy formula. So um, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to select the cell where I want the information to copy to and put in an equal sign. All formulas begin with an equal sign. And from there, I can navigate to another page. So I'm gonna to navigate to where it says PT right here. This is the PT page. And I'm gonna select a number, like 950. And you can see that there's the marching ants around 950, so that shows that it's been selected. And then just hit enter, and it comes right over. And I also have it attached to a pie chart so that the pie chart updates with the information I'm going to do that one more time, select a cell, hit equals, navigate to another page, and this time I'm going to select this one. You can see I have the marching ants, and click enter, and there it is. Now I want you to understand the anatomy of these formulas. So go to the formulas page and click on show formulas. Basically how this formula works is that it starts off with the equal sign followed by PT in this case, which is the name of the tab. Then there's an explanation point, and then there's the cell address, which is DB. So that's the basic layout of that formula. This one is slightly different. It has a fix in it. So can you tell what the difference is between this formula and this formula, aside from the fact that they have a different address? Yes, exactly. exactly, exactly. You have 
this one has single quotes around it, and that's because there's a little space right here, and formulas don't work with spaces. And so to accommodate DB2, which is right over here, to accommodate that, um, it put quotes around it so that it's a block of text. So that is the only difference between this and this. And on one of my resource pages is right here, which explains how to do that formula. And that's on a website which you can download. And I will tell you at the end of this class where you can download it from. OK, next is color. Um, on the computer I have, I have beautiful color. And on there, it's a little bit grayed out. But um, generally speaking, if you have a report, it's on paper. Black and white is OK, but black and white is not good on a computer screen. The white is glaring. If you stare at it very long, it's just hard to read. So you want to add a lot of color to it. And what's kind of nice about um, Excel is you can change the color pattern. So I'm going to click on Paint Bucket. You can see all the choices that we have here. And notice that Excel has a lot of light colors, so it's generally good to have dark or black font and a light color in the background. But when I teach class, they almost always go for the really dark colors. And this is just set to one. Um, but you can set this to, if you go to Page Layout and click under Colors, you can see you have all these choices. So I'll leave it where it was. It's just kind of a fun thing, so you're just not stuck in the one mode with Excel. OK, now suppose you want to change this to a black and white because you want to print it, and you don't want to go through a cartridge of ink. The best way to do that is to come to this upper left-hand corner, and you'll see a triangle right there, and to click on it. And when you click on it, it will select the entire page. You can copy it. You can do all kinds of things. But in this case, we're going to click on it. And I want to go back to the paint bucket and click No Fill. And I still have conditional formatting in here. So I'm going to click on that and Clear Rules. And I have my black and white. And once you've done that, you don't have to redo all that color. You just do the undo function twice, and you've got your color back after you've printed it. The shortcut for that is Control-Z. That's Z is in zebra. So color is back. Very easy way to have all the color you need that you have to live with day in and day out and uh, in the black and white for the printed copy. Make it one little drink of water. OK, the next is conditional formatting. And when I teach, this is the most fun thing. I can get students started, and they're good for the next 20 minutes. It's really fun. Conditional formatting is where it would change depending on what you had in it. So for example, in this row right here, it is conditionally formatted that if it's a negative number, it will be white with red along the outline. For example, I've got this 45 right here, minus 45. If I were to click on that and get rid of the negative, you can see that the highlighting went away. If I were to add uh, a negative, you would see the highlighting comes there. If negative numbers are important for you to know about, it's highlighted. Well, let me demonstrate how easy it is to do conditional formatting. I'm going to take this row right here and select it. And I'm going to use what's called a white cross. You can see that it's white. You can just hold down your mouse and select a large area. And you notice that I selected larger than the area of the actual table. And that is because you want to anticipate that you're going to have more rows. So after I do that, I'm going to go to Conditional Formatting, which is right here. And I can highlight top and bottom rules, the top 10, above average, below average, all kinds of rules. Um, greater than text that contains a date occurring duplicate values. That's the one I'm going to go with, duplicate values. 
And um, it gives me the choice right off the bat. You can see it spotted two duplicate values right away. And I can click on this down arrow and choose something besides pink. I can pick yellow, green, or custom format. If I do custom format, you know, I can have borders, font color, anything that I want. I'm going to leave it at, I'm going to put it green and click OK. We can't really see it. I'm going to see if I can't go back and change that. You can barely see it. So probably pink would have been the better color there. In this row, I think I may have put in, yeah, I put in a second conditional formatting. So if the word INS appears, short for insurance, anywhere, it comes out pink. So I have two um, formatting rules on this, in this row. And if you want to look at them and manage them a little bit, you can go to Manage Rules. And suppose you have two and you want an order of precedence so that one, so if they both qualify, which one is going to take precedence? You can change the precedence right here by clicking on this down arrow or up arrow. So I've got this one selected and I can actually make it a lower precedence. And that's important sometimes when you want to um, pyramid the values of what your rules are. Okay? Now for dates, sometimes people have work that is date sensitive. So suppose you have an account and you put a date on it that's six months in advance and when that time comes you have to do something special with that account. You can conditionally format it so that if it is the week of it'll highlight and then you just look at your list on Monday and you say oh here's these three or five things I have to do something with this week. So that's another advantage of conditional formatting. And it is kind of fun, you get to be creative. Okay, the next thing is I want to talk about is formulas. The most powerful thing in Excel is formulas, and it's really worth knowing. When I teach my basic and intermediate classes, I spend a third of the classes on formulas and functions. And they don't hate it, <laughs> which you might think they would, but they actually kind of gives you a sense of power that you can really figure things out. I'm going to show you a really easy way to learn functions. Click the cell where you want your formula to go, and then click where it says FX right here on the formula bar. And if you click on it, you can put like some keywords about the formula that you want to know. So most people know the sum formula. I'm going to say sum if would be a good one. And I'm going to click go. And you can see that some have came to the very top of the list. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you look at this little feature right down here, it says help on this function. This is very good. Not all help features are useful, but this is a very useful okay. This is a very useful help feature. If you want to learn it, functions, it's a free book and a very good book. So once you have it here, you can click OK, and here is a dialog box to help you build this particular formula. It has three arguments, the range, the criteria, and optionally the sum range. The third argument is optional, but it is the most useful one. It makes this one a really valuable um, function. Or you can build it just by hand. You can freehand it. I have here a couple of some ifs. In this case, it's some if, and I'm going to go over here so you can actually see it. The first argument is the range right here, which you're going to evaluate. The second argument is, in this case, UK, United Kingdom. We're looking for the words UK anywhere in here. And the third argument is we're going to sum the corresponding column related to UK. So in other words, if UK is here, we're going to sum 3. If UK is here, we're going to sum 20. So it's 23. And you can see that that's what it came up with. So I'm going to go right over here and enter. You can see 23. Every now and then you're going to want specific information that you just want to pull out. So Summit is great for that. Let me give you another example that is date related. 
I want to tell you a little bit about time in Excel. First of all, time begins on December, I mean on January 1st, 1900. That's day one. Day two is January 2nd, 1900. So every day is an additional number in Excel. So you can convert a number to a date and a date to a number by going to the format cell dialog box and changing the formatting from a date to a number and back and forth. Kind of just to um, give you a really brief look at this. On um, this other chart that is on the website that you can download, this is the format cells dialog box. And when you click on it, you can choose whether a number should be a fraction, a percentage, a date, anything. And I'll just add that there for your reference. So in this formula, I've got a sum if. And the number 42370 is the same as January 1st, 2016. So what I want to calculate is what is the amount in row, I think it's row J, which would be this row right here, where the date is 2016 or greater. So I'm going to click on this, and then you can see it. So here is the first argument. It's the row that's to be evaluated. The second argument, it has to be greater than that number. And that number represents January 1st, 2016. And the third argument rep uh, represents the total from this row that meets that qualification. So these are the three numbers right here. That's January. That's the Here's uh, 2016, 2017. We know it's going to be these three numbers right here. And we can see that that's 30. And we can also see that the answer over here is 30. So you can calculate. You have a lot of dates and you say, I want to know what year this is, or I want to know if it's past this year or before this year. You can use greater than, less than. It's just one more tool. Some, if, if you wanted to say it, it is a great tool, but it's just one of hundreds of functions and formulas that make uh, Excel powerful. Okay, now I'm going to go to pivot tables, which is in my advanced course, and it's going to be the most complicated thing. Okay, here's the table that I'm going to go with, and I want my pivot table to go right there. I'm going to select a cell, and this is going to be the upper left-hand corner of my pivot table. So I'll go to the Insert function and click on it, and right there where it says Pivot Table, we'll click on that. And the first question is it wants to know the table or the range. So I'm going to select this whole area right here. And down here, I can choose between a new worksheet or the existing worksheet. And Excel is pretty smart. It figured out that, well, probably want that space right there. And it's right, because you can see right here, M3. And I'm going to click OK. Now, there's nothing in my pivot table because I haven't selected anything. So I'm going to select salary. And you can see I like my tools at the top of the page the salary is there. But we need more than one piece of data to make it interesting. So I'm going to select let's see, positions in the company. So let's see positions. It's, a, it's only 15 people in this company, so <laughs> there's the salary that they have. You can see administrators, it's um, 275000 So I've got an administrator here. And we have the total there, uh, administrator here. You can see that those totals are 275, 275,000, which is the same right there, so I got it right. If I want to know how many people are in that category, because it's not enough just to know that's how much is spent on administration, I can take the name, and I'm going to put name in the value section because I have these three sections and right now I'm just doing rows. So I'm going to put name over here where it says values and normally in values it will sum it but if it sees a non-numerical data it will 
added. It's just a count. And as things are a count, everything has the value of one. So this way I know, just by putting the names right over here in the value section, I know that we have two administrators, three construction people, two machinists, one musician, three in operations and four in sales. This is a very funny organization. <laughs> but anyway, so now you have a perspective. So you can switch this back and forth. So I'm going to get rid of this one right here. You can go click it off in this area right here. Um, let's go to gender. We've got the gender column right there. And you can see it's still, it's got, it's listed first by position first and then gender sec secondly. But if you wanted to switch that, you can take gender and just move it to the top and then you've got female and then male just by switching it right in this area here. So position does matter. Or if you wanted columns, you can take gender and I'll move it over to columns and you've got Female in this column, male in this column, grand total. Okay, we'll take gender off. Let's put on um, region. We have people in the northwest and the southeast. You can just figure it out by category. I'm going to move region to the top and position below that. So I'm going to drag that up. And now it's sorted by the area, the region of the country. If I wanted to, I could drag the position over to the column side and I could have it like that. You just There's a huge number of choices. I'm going to come back to salary one more time. We'll get rid of region. Suppose you wanted to know the percentage of the salary and not just the numbers. If you click on salary right here, and you click on value field settings, which is right here. You can see that this is the default. This is the standard. So I'm going to click on this tab right here where it says show values as. And it says no calculation. I'm going to put down percentage of grand total. And so now I have the percentage. So I know administration is almost 30%. And operations is almost 14%, so rather top-heavy company. <laughs> so, now there is, um, you can use filters. Say if I don't want to know about every category, I can filter that out. There's a couple of ways. And you can use um, dates for time. So this is like 2016, the totals for that, for the quarter, and then broken down into the months. The thing of it is, there is a bug in the program. We have to work around it. And uh, so that's that's a little bit of a problem. And the tables are a little more glitchy. They don't update like a chart does. So they are a little bit more persnickety. But you can still, if you have massive amounts of information, you can drill down and find a lot of information in it. So the main thing is just to click on things and try things. And um, if you don't like how it's turning out, select the whole thing and delete. <laughs> start over. So that pretty much covers uh, what I had. I actually do have other topics, but I was told not to cover too much. <laughs> so um, let me tell you about some resources and then I'll answer questions or we can go over another topic or something like that. Um, I teach uh, in community ed at John Wood, and if you've ever seen this come in the mail and you look on the first page, uh, that's me. <laughs> and this is the phone number of community ed. Um, I can go to the solar program and I can see that there's quite a few people that have already signed up. So all the classes are going to run. But they do have a maximum of 15 people to the class, so it does fill up pretty fast. But um, basically, I go over things, and people work on it, and then the last part, they, they experiment, and they try things. And it's, it's really this kind of a fun class, and people bring you know, their work issues with them. Like, well, how do I solve this? Or what would be a good way to solve that? So it's actually kind of fun. 
the uh, PDFs that I was telling you about are on this website right here. And let's see if I can get to the website real quick. This is a website that I built uh, for manufacturing students to learn uh, metric measurements, metric conversions, that sort of thing, a short course. And so I just piggybacked the Excel stuff on the back of that. Okay, this is the website. And right down here is Excel. You can click on Excel. And the two PDFs that I showed you with the information about formulas, and it covers a lot more than I covered in class. And uh, the other one which talks about shortcuts and just a lot of other things. You should be able to download those and they'll come right up and give you a lot of helpful information. For example, if you put dates in and you want a fast way to put in today's date, put down control semicolon. That will put today's date in right now. You can also use the today formula which is below it, but tomorrow it will show tomorrow's date. It updates daily. So just a real quick, quick thing to know, control semicolon, or if you want something that updates all the time, it is equals today, opening and closing parentheses. Just a whole lot of uh, shortcuts. But like I said, you can go to the website and check it out.